friends, it's your certified health and fitness coach, Caroline Jordan, here with Julie Pitois at Protocol Sports Systems to share with us amazing insights on back injuries and back pain solutions. Julie is an incredible therapist and she treats many back injuries at Protocol Sports Systems. And I actually met Julie in my own journey from injuring my back and I had been all over San Diego meeting with physical therapists and doctors and wasn't really getting far at all, was bleeding money. And I walked into Protocol Sports Systems and within the first 15 minutes of our assessment, she <laughs> hit the nail on the head and really helped me start to gain insight and information into my own body and how I can make smart steps forward towards real recovery and a long-term solution to getting out of this injury for good. So I came into Julie mm -hmm. and I thought I had an SI joint injury. Yep. And all of these physical therapists all over San Diego had told me, your pelvis is rotated, you have an SI joint injury, you need to do bridges and clamshells. Mm -hmm. I was doing bridges and clamshells, still had a lot of pain. And it was really frustrating and very hard because I couldn't work that well and I was getting really stressed yeah. and um, I was kind of losing my mind. Um, and I walked in here and what happened, Julie? Oh my gosh, okay, she was losing her mind. Let me just tell you this. <laughs> I was going crazy. My hair was she falling was. out. And so, and she's, she's actually totally like every other client that we have. Um, it's, it's really, really common to have frustration and irritation and lose your mind over something that it should be easy. You get, get hurt, your body heals, you get better. But what happens when it doesn't, right? And so it's mind boggling that our bodies just aren't working the way that we want it to. But, but really, your body is actually doing everything that it needs to to help you. It's just that when Caroline got hurt, her body changed the way that it moved, which is pretty normal for all of us. And so her body started changing the way it adapted new ten, uh, pressure into her tendons and her joints and everything. How she walked was different. How she moved was different. How she sat was different. Anytime you have any kind of an injury, the body repatterns itself. It's just compensatory patterns in order for us to keep moving, right? It just, the bodies are meant to move. It doesn't mean you have to look good or feel good while you're doing it. The body is going to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. So Caroline walked in here and she sat down and we did her intake and she said, you know, I've got all this back pain and I know it's SI joint pain and I know where it's coming from and I know what it is and it's coming from here, this, this and that. And I said, okay. So... I believe you because it is coming from there, but the SI joint, when we talk about the back, most people know about SI joint um, dysfunction. Like that's a big thing. I've got SI joint dysfunction. Well, your SI joint is really your sacroiliac joint. It's where your sacrum and your ilium come together in your pelvis. Hold on. I know you're gonna. <laughs> This is when you're gonna have me pull out all my toys. Yay, the pelvis okay. comes out to play. So, this is your pelvis, right? This is your sacrum, this is your ilium. So this makes up your pelvis, right? You've got a couple of other bones that are all fused in here, but for today, we're just gonna talk about this. So you've got your SI joint that sits here. Now, in your body, the pelvis is literally the middle of the body, right? It takes orders from the top of you and it takes orders from the bottom of you because it's, it's only attached by a ton of muscles in here. So you've got your, your femur, your legs that are attached in here. You've got your abs, your core that's attached in here. Your spine is, goes up the back and you've got all these muscles up and up in, in front and back, top and bottom. So if you think of this, I always think of the pelvis as like a ship. And so the ship is on the water, right? And if the water is calm, ship is great. But if the weather from above is blowing and moving, now the, the ship starts to move and it starts to undulate and it starts to move because it's being pulled by the wind. But then below, if you have a lot of waves that are coming, now it starts to dunk and it starts to move and it starts to be pulled. It's being pulled by all the muscle structure around it. Mm -hmm. So she comes in and she's got SI joint pain. Well, the SI joint is literally just where the sacrum and the ilium meet. And it's just tied up with a lot of, of ligaments back here, right? It's got ligaments in the back. It's got ligaments in the front. So my, my um, comment to Caroline was, great. I'm glad, glad you have SI joint pain and I believe you, but where's it coming from? Because this doesn't create pain. This takes orders. 
The pelvis takes orders. It doesn't ever give orders. What it gives is pain from all the orders that are being pulled from everywhere else. And so what we did is then we started to play detective and try to figure out exactly what was going on. Because I know that this isn't doing anything. It's something that's attached to this guy that's creating your pain. That's a big thing to know. Yes. Huge. Because everybody thinks that this is the thing that's doing it. It's not. Because remember, you've got legs that are coming off of here. You've got hamstrings that are coming off of here. You've got, you've got abs and, and uh, quadriceps that are coming off of here that are doing this. We're being pulled all over. This is just the effect, not the cause. So what we did is we went through and we checked her hips. We checked her legs. We checked her feet. We checked her ankles. We checked above and below. Mm -hmm. And we figured out that there was an imbalance there. A lot Which of them happens to everybody because Caroline has been on the earth for more than a couple of years. And so she has developed walking patterns, standing patterns, sitting patterns, pre-injury, post-injury, mm -hmm. um, uh, current injury. Like as she's moving through things, her body's like, oh, well, we can't, we can't really put weight on this foot. So let me move into a different way of doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure every single one of you guys are like, oh, that's happened to me. So the poor back, it gets a, it, this poor back, it gets like, it gets such a bad, a bad, um, uh, I don't even reputation. Yeah. yeah. You know, it gets a bad reputation because it's supposed to be the one that's doing it. Oh, I got a bad back. You don't have a bad back. You got a lot of other parts in you that are trying to take a lot of attention away from your brain. And the poor back is getting all of the, the bad stuff, right? Mm -hmm. It's the effect because it's got all the nerves. So this SI joint impingement or dysfunction or uh, irritation that, sh that people have, where is it actually coming from? With Miss Caroline, we found that she actually, her pelvis, when it normally sits like this, her pelvis was sitting rotated like that. So we needed to figure out where else was it coming from. So she had a hip that really wasn't working the way that we wanted to because everything moves and glides and adapts to the tension that is being placed on it, yep. right? So if you think of the kinetic chain, which is your body, your body is made up of muscle joints and nerves. And muscles have to contract and they only get smaller. They only contract in on themselves and get shorter but it takes nerves to innervate them in order to create the contraction. Mm. And then muscles are attached to the bones. And then as the muscles contract, there's the movement. As the muscles contract, there's the movement because the muscles pull the bones. Yep. So something is pulling on this thing. So what we found is as she's moving, her, her femur wasn't really moving the way that we wanted it to. And it was kind of stuck in the joint. This is a bigger story, but what it did is it, it created, lack of movement into the joint, which then made more movement happen into the pelvis. Interesting. Totally, right? Interesting. Because if things aren't moving, this isn't moving, it's gonna figure out how to find movement somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So remember, pelvis just takes orders, so this one's like, find me movement, mm -hmm. and the movement came. So guess what happens from there? Miss Caroline's low back. And I love this guy because it's only two vertebrae, but it's my vertebrae with my disc. Now, if you look at it, this is our low back. This is our spinous process. These are our transverse process. These are two. This is your disc, and this is your vertebral bodies. And these guys, that's your nerves, right? And the nerves, they, they just, we just, everything gets on your nerves. That's why they call it getting on your nerves because it's no fun when things <laughs> get on your nerves, right? Right. And so now Miss Caroline's pelvis has moved and so normally her pelvis does this and it flexes and it extends and it rotates and life is good because there's this big disc that's taking an even amount of pressure. But now Caroline's pelvis has moved, right? Because it's rotated because it's taking orders. Well now, if we think about it, this even, even amount of disc pressure is now rotated mm -hmm. down like this. So now all of the pressure is going on one side of the disc instead of the other side of the disc because the pelvis has moved. So if I rotate over here, you've got these joints, these uh, joints where the, the nerves, or I'm sorry, these joints where the vertebrae sit on top of one another, those are called your facet joints. And all that is is just keeping these guys in line so they don't shoot off as we move. And so now 
if Caroline's pelvis has moved and we've rotated, boom, there's the opening of the facet joint and that's gonna unlock all this pain into her low back. Mm -hmm. So she may feel it in the low back, but is it really coming from the low back? Mm -mm. No, she's coming from her pelvis, you guys. So we have to think about that SI joint, once we rotate it back to neutral, put these back together, now we take all the stress off of it, and now the SI joint, which is just ligaments, can go back to its aha calmness. So the strategy was to first figure out what was pulling my pelvis out of position mm -hmm. and address those issues yep. with my tissues. Yep. I think she has it on a shirt. I do. I thought it was really cute. <laughs> um, and then also I got orthopedic manual therapy, right, yeah. to help mm -hmm. me kind of realign my pelvis after everything had calmed down that was pulling it out of position in the first place. Yeah. So if someone at home is dealing with what they think is a rotated pelvis, yep. they've been dealing with back pain for months, years, if they've had, I, me personally, I've had this injury a few times. Yeah. And I think I'm really finally getting to the root cause of the issue so I don't have to have it a few more times. Yeah. Um, but if someone at home is like, man, I'm really stuck having SI joint pain, back pain, yada, yada, what would be their first steps? Well, first of all, if you have pain going from seated to standing, every time you stand up, you're like, oh, it's on one side more than the other. Most likely that's going to be more into your SI joint. If you're, if you're getting up and it's like feeling like it's on one side of your back, if you're bending over like you're trying to wash dishes or bend over to tie your shoe and you're like, oh, that hurts across your back, most likely that's more of a facet joint as well. Mm -hmm. Like those, if it hurts to roll over in bed where you're like, oh, a guy can only roll on one side and it just hurts every time I roll over, that's most likely a facet joint as well. Mm -hmm. If you are doing that, know that, that that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have surgery. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to go to the end result, which is like, oh, I got to go to the doctor and I got to get this. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, but I'm saying there's other things that might happen that could be an easy, easy result of change, right? We could fix this easily so that you're not feeling it as much anymore. So what would be the easy fix then? So here's the thing. You're going to have to have somebody kind of go in and actually understand what's happening. Yeah. Because what I will tell you is anytime you have pain, on one side, the body adjusts to the um, stimulus put on it. Right, into the tension. So when the muscle is pulling down on one side, the attention's going all onto one side, but it's stopped over here. Mm -hmm. So when there is pain, there's usually inhibition. And what inhibition is, is where the muscle's like, I'm not working anymore. So I'm the done. first step would be to get an assessment. To get an assessment. To figure out, to be detective and mm -hmm. figure out what the issues with your tissues are yeah. that are making your back hurt. 100%. And you want to have somebody who actually puts their hands on you. Mm -hmm. Because you can't assess if you don't actually feel what's going on. Palpation is really, really crucial. It is. But you got to find the right people. Mm -hmm. And if you are in San Diego or Southern California, or if you want to fly here because it's a great vacation spot, it Protocol is. Sports Systems is amazing. <laughs> um, but sometimes you do have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. And that was my situation. I kissed a lot of frogs in San Diego before I walked in the doors here. So it really does help to have real in-person tactile feedback assessment it and does. therapy. It does. So step one, assessment. Step two, manual therapy. Yep. Step three, so step three would be once we kind of move you and put everything back together again, you get to do an exercise to actually keep it there. Mm -hmm. So this is really where you get to actually connect with your body again. What we do here is we do a three-step three, three process. It's called cerebral somatic experiential. So we're going to tell you what's going on and then we're going to put it into your body so you actually can feel the difference. Because if you've had this for a long enough time, your body is adapted and you won't actually feel any, any kind of difference. Mm -hmm. So we need to connect you with the body that's happening um, that is connected again, right? So we need to activate muscles that haven't activated before or in a long time. And we have to deactivate stuff that's kind of overload. Yep. Most often when people are having a back issue, their glutes are usually not working that well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're not activating. And you'll, we'll get what we call a front butt issue, which is the quadriceps or the hip flexors are taking over 90% of the time, and that's, that's part of the problem. So in order for us to keep the movement where it is and to keep that therapy 
consistent, you get to do the work of unloading and connecting with your body again so that we can restructure and balance. And it's hard. It takes time. It it's does. It's such a process. It is. Um, but when you have the right support and you, I think what I love about Julie and Protocol of Sports Systems is that it's so empowering to be here mm -hmm. because she's told me this before, no one fixes you. Mm -hmm. You fix you. Mm -hmm. Being able to understand what's going on with your body, feeling empowered to know how to help yourself get out of pain and find a more long-term solution yeah. to moving better and feeling better in your body. Yeah. That's really the secret. It's not complicated. There's nobody out there that has some special MRI that's no. going to tell you any magic, anything different. It really is just mm -hmm. knowing, understanding what's going on mm -hmm. and understanding how to move out of that movement pattern and into a better one. It's true. Imaging while great is imaging. It doesn't tell you symptoms. And so you always want to treat the symptoms, not the images, because the images could be on there for a long period of time and you could have absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. Mm -hmm. that, that's actually really common with people. The other thing too is, like Caroline was saying, you can't fix, we can't fix you. You get to do the work. And I will tell you, it's foundational work. It's not, it's not really sexy. It's like watching paint dry a lot of times and it's super, super, super frustrating. You think you're frustrated with pain? Try, try making your butt turn on after years of not having it turn on, it's right? It's true. And you, you're trying so it's, hard. Yeah, it's so hard. You're just like, I'm just laying here and I'm just trying to squeeze my butt. Right. That's the difference. So you have to understand it in the cerebral, but somatically you have to feel it in your body. And so what we're doing is we're basically, if you think of your brain as this big computer, it's right, it's your hardware. So somewhere along the line, it gets, it gets a lot of um, information and data back and forth from your body. It's been sent out to your arm saying, flex your elbow. Mm -hmm. And then it gets sent back to your brain. Your brain's like, okay, flex the elbow. And then we flex the elbow, right? Mm -hmm. Well, after injury, the body's like, eh, we're not touching that anymore because we're not getting a lot of attention or we're getting way more attention from the front of the leg. So we'll think we'll go there. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to redo your hardware and so that we take that virus off that came through and we rewire you so that you actually have connection back to your glute because mm -hmm. you can't think your movement. You can't think it. You have to feel it. That is the most important thing. So if you're struggling with back injury and you've been in pain for a long time mm -hmm. and you feel like you've tried everything, I really want to encourage you to take notes of the things we suggested yeah. today. Comment below and let us know what resonated with you, what you think you might try. It's hard slowing it down. Mm -hmm. It's hard going back to basics, yeah. but it's a lot less hard than dealing with pain for the rest of your life. 100%. And you guys, if you are looking for a therapist, make sure they hear you. Like the biggest thing for that I hear in here is people come here and they're like, I've tried everything and no one listened to me. No one heard me. You, you deserve a life without pain. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is your fundamental right to have no pain in your life. But you get to be proactive and decide that you don't want to have it because nobody's going to be able to do it except for you. You are in your body more than anybody else. So make sure you're proactive and make sure that if somebody is telling you something that you are going to do it. Yeah, it's a process, but you know, Julie is an amazing resource. Please reach out to her. I'll leave yeah. all of her information in the description box below. I hopefully will have her as a guest on the channel much more to share her insights and her expertise with us because it's she's really helped me so much. And I'm really <laughs> excited to share what I'm learning throughout this process with Julie mm -hmm. and Protocol Support Systems. So please comment below. Let us know if this helped you. Like the video, share it with someone who also has back pain and could use a little bit of turning on the butt as yes, well. Yes, we love turning on the butt. That we love, so yeah, weird, you but you I just, love it. You gotta activate those glutes, man. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Julie. It was You're such a welcome. pleasure. And you guys keep healing mm -hmm. um, and keep moving forward. We're here for you and we will see you soon. Bye.